Hey everybody, my name is Mike Montgomery and today I'd like to show you how I build picture frames. And I know there's a lot of these types of videos on YouTube and a lot of different types of frames you can build, but this is fast, strong, and they look super pro. So let's get started on Modern Builds. Now before you get started, you should know what size frame you want. Frames kind of come in standard sizes. You can get an 11 by 14, which is what we're gonna be building. You've got the classics, nine by what? Eight by 10. Eight by 10, you got six by five. If you don't already know that, I'm gonna leave a link down in the description to an article that kind of explains standard picture frame sizes. Because frames themselves can be different thicknesses, different sizes, the only measurement that really matters is how big the opening is. That way, when you buy your matting and your glass, it'll fit. So before we can go cutting all of these pieces to size, we need to make a groove that'll be on the inside of the frame. It's basically what allows the picture and the glass and the backer to be inset in the frame instead of sitting just on the back of it. And with everything else when it comes to building, there's a million ways to do it, but since this is a video on how I build frames, this is how I like to do it. I have a half inch dado bit in my router. And essentially what this does is the ball bearing rides against your workpiece while the cutter head cuts in that specific distance. If you don't have a router table, you wanna make sure that this is clamped to your workbench really tight. You don't want this to be able to move at all because routers are dangerous. I'm gonna start by just taking a little bit, just a little off the top. Oak especially has a long and fibrous grain that makes it susceptible to cracking or splitting if you try and cut away too much at once. So after my first pass, I lowered my bit a little bit more, took a second pass, and then finally, on my third, reached the final depth. And even here, even though I was taking light passes, I still had a little bit of splintering on the edge. In the written article for this project, I'm gonna have all the measurements that you'll need if you wanna build a frame the same size I am, or if you wanna build one a different size, hopefully all the info should be there to where you'll be able to do it yourself too. Before you make any cuts with your miter saw, especially if you're trying to make a frame, make sure your cuts are exactly 45 degrees. So at this point, we have one of our top pieces and one of our side pieces. It's a smart thing to make sure you're actually making square cuts. Ours look pretty bomb. I'm not seeing any gaps. The second thing you'll wanna do is either get your piece of glass you'll be using or the mat that you're using and just see how it fits. You dingus? If it's sitting in the corner, it looks like there's about maybe an eighth of an inch here of play, and that's good. I'd rather there be a tiny bit of wiggle room than there not be enough space to fit everything in there. Now, instead of using the tape measure to measure all my pieces, I'm gonna reference these two. If I make the bottom the exact same size as the top, and one side the exact same size as the other, then when everything goes together, it should be square. Ooh, those are in fact the same size. Perfect. A lot of YouTube videos showing how to build picture frames show some sort of reinforcement, whether that's a spline on the corner or some sort of dowel. And that's cool, that's great, it works, but I kind of think it looks ugly. I very much prefer just seeing the clean joint with no visible reinforcement. So instead of using any of that, I'm using what are called V-nails. This is what any professional framer uses and what you see whenever you buy a frame from the store. I've already made one of these before, but I'm gonna show you how to make a really quick jig so that you could clamp and nail everything square. To start, you're gonna get your speed square and a couple of scrap pieces of wood. There's a three quarter inch sheet of plywood that I'm gonna use to nail these pieces onto. Just add glue, butt your pieces up next to each other and hold everything down with a couple F-style clamps. Nailed it. There are specific tools for punching in these V-nails, but they're about 40 bucks a piece, so I didn't really see any sense in buying one if I'm just making a few frames here and there. The one trick I will say is make sure you're hammering straight down. If you're hammering at an angle, that nail won't go in straight. It's inevitable, especially if this is the first picture frame you're building, that there's gonna be a gap somewhere in the corners. Either you weren't cutting exactly 45 degrees, you could have been a half a degree off or a quarter of a degree, degree off, or things shifted or you just didn't line things up right. 
I've got three decent corners and one kind of ugly corner, so all I'm gonna do, get some wood glue and the finest sawdust you can find. Even if you have to go sand something so you have a little bit of sawdust, you'll just blend it all up and basically turn it into a wood putty, wood paste type of thing. This is gonna hide that little bit of crack that you have. You always gotta hide your crack, right guys? Technically, it'll make the joint a little bit stronger too. That mixture dries in about 15 or 20 minutes, then I could come back and sand everything with 220 grit sandpaper. As I finished, I applied two coats of Minwax Polycrylic. I think oak looks best with a water-based finish rather than oil. So while we wait for that finish to cure, I'd like to give a huge thanks to this video's sponsor, Storyblocks. Storyblocks provides premium creative content at a price anybody can afford. Subscribers get unlimited access to over 300,000 stock photos, illustrations, and vectors that you can download with no limits. Literally, you could download the entire website if you wanted to. Once you download the image, you have rights to it forever, regardless of how long your membership lasts. Whether you're looking for stock photos for a presentation or illustrations and vectors to help with your design, Storyblocks has such a huge selection, I'm sure you could find what you're looking for. In fact, I needed some artwork to put in these frames, so I went on to Storyblocks and I found some really awesome textures and patterns that look awesome. Now Storyblocks is giving you guys a one week free trial to test out the service and prove how cool it is. All you have to do is follow the link down in the description, sign up, try it out for a week. If you love it, keep it. If not, no worries. You're gonna like it. Thanks Storyblocks. Our finish is cured, our print is ready. The last thing we need to do is make the little backer board. Now you can use eighth inch plywood, 16th inch plywood, but I, like most people in America, I would assume have a lot of cardboard laying around from Amazon packages. And the cool thing about that is it's free. Well, I guess you have to buy something from Amazon, but it's kind of free. I traced the opening of the frame, then used a razor blade to cut about a half inch outside of that. That way it fits right into the groove. Step one, glass. Step two, get your mat with hopefully clean hands. Put that in there. Step three, artwork. Finally, you can put your backer board. Then give it a little quick double check, make sure everything looks right. That looks good. These pins are called glazier points. They hold the backer board in and they're easy to remove if you need to switch out the artwork. To hang it, I'm gonna be using some Velcro hangables. I'll have a link to that in the description. They're not a sponsor, but they're a really quick and easy way to hang a picture and it doesn't damage the wall if you ever need to remove it. It looks a bit low. That yeah. looks good, that looks good. Okay. Just apply pressure for about 30 seconds and then the adhesive should hold it up. Going into this, I really didn't expect the oak to look so nice. I'm definitely gonna use it more going forward. And the cool thing is I only got about 15, 20 bucks in materials, and if I were to buy a frame like this, I could easily see it going for about 40 or 50 bucks. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a lot of fun, and I think the frame came out great. Like I mentioned earlier, I'll have links to everything I used down in the description of the video, so make sure and check those links out, as well as the written article on my website if you're looking for any kind of dimensions or measurements. If you have any questions or comments about this project, you can always leave a comment in the comments, or you can hit me up on Instagram. A DM is a really quick way to get in contact with me. If you're new to my channel, I'd like to say welcome, as well as please consider subscribing. That way you can stay updated every time I post a new project video. If you want to watch one or two of my other videos, they'll pop up here on the screen. And I'd really appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot, everybody. Hope you have a great rest of your week. And until next time, this has been Modern Builds. Bye, everybody.